Hello, Candy Matson. I understand you've been hired to find out who knocked off Donna Dunham. Abrupt and right to the point. That's my business, old man who talks like a ghost. Take care of your health, little lady. Donna Dunham is dead. Let her stay like that. You take care of your cues and I'll show my peas, understood? Not quite. Listen to this. <laughs> oh, goody, goody. Bullets now delivered by phone. Thanks for the slug. I'll have it identified later. Maybe you'll be identified later. Remember what I said, Candy Matson. Forget about Donna Dunham. <laughs> My name is Candy Matson. I like money, lots of it. That's why I became a private eye. And, too, you meet such interesting people. Mostly dead. But getting back to the cash angle, that's why I took on the Donna Dunham case. I knew it was full of dynamite. But a girl has to eat now and then, maintain a penthouse on Telegraph Hill, and keep the moths out of a few mink coats, doesn't she? Sure. And a shot fired into your room from across the street at three in the morning is just one of those occupational hazards. So I took the job and the 500 and went to work. Like to hear how the whole thing started? Well, leave us proceed to Act One. <laughs> I'd had a hard day at the office, sleeping all day. And I needed a bit of a tonic to pick me up. So the natural thing to do was to ground loop into the marigold room and see what could be done. As I sank down onto one of the padded stools, the dispenser approached. Uh, Make it a martini, my good man. Very dry. So dry it comes out like a blotter. Look, lady, nothing would give me more pleasure, but I can't serve you here unless you have an escort. What? Oh, I, I'm, I'm waiting for someone. That's what they all say. But he'll be here very soon. I know, I know. It never fails. Why, you low-minded crock. For two cents, I I'd see, not go... I see, I arrived just in time. Save your two cents, my dear. Huh? You heard what the lady said? A martini. Uh, make it two. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, sure. I, I thought it was just another one of those... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, two martinis. Well, saved from a fate worse than death. Miss Matson. Who are you? A natural question. And I'd like a natural answer. Roberts is my name. Warren Roberts. Oh. I own a few steamships hither and yon about the world. Oh, yes, I know. I took a trip on one of your scows once. The food was a nightmare's nightmare. How do you think I came to be a millionaire? Ah, uh-huh. I see your point. How did you know my name and what do you want? I have a business proposition to make to you, Miss Matson. You're sure it's business, Mr. Roberts? Strictly business, Miss Matson. Call me Candy. You tell me the details and I'll tell you what it'll cost you. Fair enough. But don't faint. You can always make it back on your food. Well, I can hardly tell you here. Uh, suppose we drop over to my place. But I want that martini. My man will make us a batch over there. Oh, the things I do to make a living... Okay, let's go. Hey, uh, how about these drinks? Now, here you are, my man, and save the martinis for some poor wayward soul who hasn't the wherewithal to make the purchase. Oh, good evening, Mr. Roberts. I, I didn't know you were expecting company. Uh, so soon after... Take Miss Matson's things, Montgomery, and bring us some martinis. Uh, they're all made, sir. Good. Let's go into the drawing room, shall we? Mm-hmm. Modest little mousetrap, isn't it? And I'll bet it's had a good path beaten to its door, too. <laughs> Quite a sense of humor you have, Candy. <laughs> well, it helps now and then. Here, sit down here. That's it. I, uh, I can't quite see you. It's like being behind a retaining wall. Oh, well, I'll just listen. What's the topic of conversation? A young lady named... Donna Dunham. Uh Aha, the female element. What is your connection? Much strictly that of a patron. Oh? 
Miss Dunham was a hat check girl over at the Scarlet Dawn. I heard her sing one night. I decided right then and there that I was going to sponsor her career. Why? Yes. Donna Dunham was murdered early this morning. By you? What? Are you out of your head? Yes, when I think of the fee I'm going to get from you. I uh, beg your pardon, sir. The martinis. What? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, put them down there, Montgomery. Yeah, yes, sir. Very good, Montgomery. I won't need anything else tonight. Thank you, sir. Good night, miss. Uh, good night. Uh, d- don't sleep too tight. May I? Mm, you certainly may. I've been waiting far too long for one of these. There you are. <clears throat> Well, as a sponsor, you didn't pick a protege with great lasting qualities, did you? No, I didn't. She was so young, so very lovely. Will you take the case, Miss Matson? What do I have to go on? Oh, well, very little. Well, my suspicions point to a musician who worked at the Scarlet Dawn. He seemed to resent very strongly my stepping into the picture. Were they going to get it? Off and on. Until I started to back Donna's career. A very interesting triangle. What do the police have to say? The police, Miss Matson, have not yet been notified. What? I went over there this morning and I discovered the body lying on the floor. I I became confused. I I locked the door and called the Scarlet Dawn. I told the manager that Miss Dunham was quite ill and wouldn't be able to appear tonight. Extremely ill, I'd say. Well, this is fine. You realize you're in trouble, don't you? Yes, I do. And that if I take this case, I'm sticking my neck out, too? Exactly. My uh, fee is 500 That's a fair price. In advance. Well, I'll make out a check immediately. Oh! Won't you have another martini? I, uh... I don't think so. You know, you are very beautiful. Ah, uh, thank you. But I already have a sponsor. And your lips are very, very kissable. The best you can buy from Max Factors. Are you sure you don't want another martini? Look, Roberts, let's get this straight. You're in the middle of a jackpot. Make that check out right now so I can join you. Then it's up to me to spring the both of us. In the meantime, get that glint out of your eye. The one that's wired for wolf calls. Understood? Very well. I'll get started right away. Where does the late Miss Dunham live? Just on the edge of Chinatown, 27B Gresham Alley. It's the only three-flat house on the block. I'll find it. And you, you just stick right here and don't poke your face out of the door. Now, the, uh, check, if you will. Now, listen, you, if you think you're going to get... Well, send me back to the last line in the chorus, if it isn't old Hawkshaw himself. Yeah, that's right. Hiya, Candy. Now, how you ever got to be a police detective, I'll never know. I heard you trailing me for the last two blocks. Maybe I wanted you to hear me. What are you doing over in Chinatown, Candy? I like tomato chow yuck. Uh-huh. Something up? Not with you around, there isn't. Look, Candy, just a little word of caution. We're laying for you. Oh. The chief isn't very happy about you busting up that Newton case last month. Somebody had to. The score was still tied in the 27th inning. Stop gagging, Candy. What are you doing around here? You don't like tomato chow yuck that much. Well, maybe that oriental music sends me. By the way, where's the Scarlet Dawn, Mallard? Huh? Uh, Right down there on the corner. Come on. I'll buy you a double Mickey. Uh, No, thanks. I just had one. And listen, Candy, take a tip. Don't interfere with the work of the police. Don't worry about me, Mallard. And you take a tip, too. Next time you trail somebody, get yourself a pair of tennis shoes. Yes, miss. You like a table? 
No, thanks. Uh, no. Something I can do? Hmm? Oh. Oh, yes, I'm... I'm a friend of Donna Dunham's. She wanted me to come over and tell you that she's feeling better. She'll be back at work tomorrow night. Well, that's good. Uh, business at the hot check stand, no good without her. Yeah. Yes, yes she's a great girl. By the way, I, I, I don't see her boyfriend tonight. Boyfriend? You know, the, the fellow who plays in the band. Oh, Donny Andrini. No, he got night off. Oh, too bad. She wanted me to tell him, too. Yep, too bad. Oh, maybe you'll find him at the Lotus Hotel. He lived there. Oh, sure. The Lotus. Yes, I'll check there, and thank you very much. Rembrandt Watson speaking. Yes, I know. Now, look. Photographs taken at reasonable prices. I know, Rembrandt. Family I, groups I... and portraits especially also... Uh, Rembrandt, this is I, Candy Madsen. Fine colored pictures are... What? Candy Matson? That's right. By all the furies of Zeus. Why did you have to call just now? I was wooing the muse that only Bacchus can create, probing the infinitesimal heights a soul can reach from the tear of the grape. And you have to call and spoil it all. Look, Rembrandt, uncross your eyes and listen to me. I shall listen, my lily, but undoubtedly I won't like it. What skullduggery are you up to now? I'm knee-deep in something that smells as high as the Oakland mudflats. A towering comparison. What is it? I can't tell you now, but I want you to do me a favor. Get your finest camera and go over to 27B Gresham Alley. Get inside and take all the pictures you can at the place. Won't I be intruding? No. There's a very attractive young lady there. Oh, how delightful. She's dead. How dull. I dislike intensely one-sided conversation. All right. What do I do then? Go back to your place and get me some prints as fast as you can. I go, but not willingly. Only for you would I forsake the mood I have achieved through prodigious application. Bully for you, laddie buck. I'll see you at your place in about an hour. Are, are you the night clerk? I ain't sitting bull. Yes, we have no rooms. Uh, I'm not here for a room. Oh? Well, uh, maybe there's something I can do for you. Yes. Uh, could you tell me if Mr. Danny Andrini is in? No, he isn't. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen him all day. Uh, y yes, I know. Th there's a reason. We had to take him to the hospital this morning. What? Yes. He's, he's under observation for appendicitis. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So, I was wondering if you'd let me have his key. Huh? He wants me to bring in his portable radio. Oh, does he have one? Why, sir, did you ever know a musician who didn't own a portable radio? <laughs> well, I know, come to think of it. I... Yeah, yeah, here's the key. It's uh, room 418. Thank you. You're oh. very kind. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. All right, Candy Matson, start making like a private eye. Letters, letters. Yes, over here. Promising. A whole pile of. Well, let's try this one. Dear Danny, I don't know how to start this, but your accusations last night need some sort of answering. I'm not in love with Warren Roberts and never will be. He's just proving to be a very kind and gracious friend. You must realize that I have placed my singing career above everything else, and I want to... Well, leave us confront the issue, Candy. Oh. Hello, you. Hello. I was wondering if I could be of any assistance. Oh, no, it... It seems Mr. Andrini was out of his head. Uh -huh. I, I mean, he doesn't seem to have a portable radio. Oh. I'll, uh, 
I'll just be on my way. Oh, now, what's the rush? You don't have to leave right away. Wouldn't you like a drink or something? No, not right now. I, I am pressed for time. Oh. I tell you what, though. Huh? I'll be back later. How's that? Sure. Fine. When? Let's make it next Whitsuntide, huh? Goodbye. <laughs> On my soul, I'd like to have the popcorn concession here tonight. Come in, come in. Rembrandt, you're a double-crosser. I, a double-crosser? Yes. My dear, you're mistaken. Oh? The only time I double-crossed was out in the country. I passed over a bridge, then I had to double-cross back. Oh, no. I found I'd left my knapsack with some rare vintage in it on the other side. What are you doing here? You haven't had time to get the pictures I wanted. That's just the point. To elucidate, I arrived at 27B Gresham Alley and found it to be a most loathsome location. That's beside the point. What happened? I couldn't get in. Oh, Rembrandt, I, I, I've done you a grave injustice. Of course you couldn't get in. Warren Roberts has the key. Who's this minion Roberts? I'll tell you later. We've got to work fast. Mallard sniffed something in the wrong key and the police will be in on the deal before long. Mallard, the gumshoe? That's right. I've just got to get pictures of the layout so I can study them. In my own fumbling fashion, Candy, my love, I have given birth to an idea. Even from you, Rembrandt, I'll take it. I'm grabbing at straws. Straws. Very effective with tall, cool Colin. Never mind now. What's your idea? Let us hire ourselves to a locksmith. Present ourselves as man and wife, and the peasant will make us a key. Voila! Entree to the Madurie's apartment. No, Rembrandt, that'll never work. Oh, wait a minute. Three flats to the house. I used to live in just that kind of a house out on Fulton Street when I was a kid. A nauseating thought. Rembrandt, those flats are identical. If we can get into the flat above, we can get what we want. I think I fathom your reasoning, Candy. In other words, the living room is just the same. That's right. The dining room, likewise. Check. And the same goes for the bedroom, the kitchen, and even the, uh... That's right, even in there. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go slumming in Gresham Alley. Go ahead, Rembrandt. Ring the bell. Always I must do the labor. Oh, poo. Well, I hope we don't disturb the dead in the... Middle flat. You won't. From what I hear, she was done in sort of permanently. Oh, dear, there's no one at home. Come on, Candy. Let's return and see what Bacchus has to offer. No, wait. I thought I heard something. There you see. Got all your flash bulbs? As they say in the old country, have I lost my marbles? Open the door. Beauty before age, my dear. Thank you, Randy. Kind of dark in here. What a peculiar aroma. Definitely smacks of the far east. Yes. Something you folks wanted? Chalk up, Candy. It's your cue. Why, uh, yes. May we come up? What do you want? Well, we're with a magazine. The ha House Lovely. We want to take a few photographs of your place. At this hour? The working press is never shackled by the hands on a clock, sir. Sounds phony to me, but come on up. What do you want to take pictures of this beat-up joint for? Well, you, you see, it, it's comparison. The old and the new. We've already taken pictures of a flat similar to this, only it's been remodeled. This is... Well, this is perfect for the contract. Mm. Uh, I guess it's all right. Go ahead. Uh, start with the hall, Rembrandt. Roger, my pretty. Let's see. This should be just about right. Mm-hmm. Now the, uh, the bedroom. That should be off the hall here. Oh, yes. Uh, shoot from the door, Rembrandt. Did you get the entire room? Mm, not quite, but most of it. That'll do. Just a moment. Ah. There we are. You cats work fast. Uh, what was that? I said you work fast. Uh, yes. 
Now, in the bathroom, do you have a tub or a shower? Why, you... Why don't you see for yourself? No. On second thought, I... I think that's about all we need. But Candy, you said that we Come could... along, Rembrandt. And, uh, thank you very much. Well, Mr. that's Rembrandt. okay. And don't slam the door. The lady downstairs is sound asleep. <laughs> I've got this thing licked. Are you referring to this case or my desire to return to the arms of Bacchus? That I could never lick. I'm talking about the case. But I need help, Rembrandt. I am here. No. That's not enough. I need the big, strong arm of the law. Oh, no. Candy, you traitor. I hate to admit it, but I need somebody like Mallard. Am I being paid? Hmm? Oh, no. It's the wicked genie. Yikes, it's a gumshoe. Yeah, in person. Mallard, how did you get here? I took your advice and bought some tennis shoes. <laughs> All right, Spill, what goes on? Been following you around till I'm punchy. Start talking, Candy. Okay, so you heard me. I do need your help, Mallard. Badly. There was a young girl murdered yesterday at 27B Gresham Alley. Is that the place you just came from? That's right. Why don't we ever hear of these things? Oh, I get exclusive rights. Anyway, I think I have the whole deal figured out. You can have full credit, Mallard, but you've got to take my advice. It hurts, but go ahead. Now go back to 27C, Gresham Alley. That's the top flat. Mm -hmm. You'll find a character there named Danny Andrini. Uh, take him. Then get out to 5711 Pacific Street as fast as you can. Uh, all right, I'll do it. But, Candy, so help me, if this is a foul-up on you, the new look with stripes is going to be very fashionable. She knows what she's doing, Mallard. When you get back to Gresham Alley, just tell Mr. Andrini that you're from House Lovely. He'll adore you. This is it, Rembrandt. I just... Hope my man Montgomery hasn't retired as yet. What are we doing out here on Pacific, Candy? This is out of our league. All of a sudden, I've become socially conscious. Come on, Montgomery, answer the door. Ah, right on cue. I beg your pardon. Did you ring? Uh, no, Montgomery. We, we crossed the moat and used a battering ram. I'm sorry, young lady. Mr. Roberts doesn't wish to be disturbed. Look, Montgomery, remember me. I was here earlier this evening. Mr. Roberts and I had a martini together. Martinis? Well, it was worth a safari out here after all. Uh-uh. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, miss. I didn't recognize you at first. Uh, yes, do come in, won't you? And the light dawned. If you'll just wait in the drawing room, miss, I'll inform Mr. Roberts of your presence. Thank you very much, Montgomery. I used to know a chap like that in the British Army. By continual groveling and studied abjectedness, he worked his way up to the rank of a private. <laughs> Thanks, Rembrandt. That's the first laugh I've had tonight. What's the pitch, Candy? I don't get it. You will in a minute. Shh. You hear the patter of little feet. Miss Matson, what's the idea? I thought you were going to check with me by phone. Mr. Roberts, this thing is bigger than either of us. I just couldn't wait. <clears throat> Uh, is there a martini in the house? I'll have Montgomery serve in just a moment. I don't think there will be time, Mr. Roberts. Well, where is she? Upstairs. You really loved her, didn't you? Madly. That just about describes it. Madly. And while you were, uh, shall we say, sponsoring her career... You thought she was playing around with Danny Andrini as well. Yes, she was. You're wrong, Robert. I have a letter from Donna Dunham to Danny Andrini. In effect, she told him to blow, skedaddle, vamoose. What? That's right. So it seems we have a slight case of mistaken murder on our hands, doesn't it? Yes. On one hand. On the other, I have two in mind that will be deliberate. You asked for it, Miss Matson. Too bad you had to bring your friend along. I wouldn't if I were you, Robert. A writer has a pistol. I thought you said he served martinis. This isn't exactly a social moment. 
I know how you privatize work, your lone wolves. You confide in no one. So with a pull of the finger, I erase all evidence. Just like this. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, I'm really grateful to you, but where on earth did you come from? Like I say, Candy, you just can't beat these tennis shoes. Well, that clears everything up except for one thing. Where do we go now for the martinis? My phone rings, and I'm into the darndest message you ever heard of. Sure, Roberts killed her. He was jealous. And I knew I was on the right track when Rembrandt said the apartment above Donna Dunham smelled like the Far East. It was tobacco odor, the same Turkish aroma I had smelled in Roberts' home out on Pacific Street. Danny Andrews? Well, he was waiting for Roberts to return. He was going to kill him. He knew that Roberts had rented the flat above Dunham for uh, sponsoring purposes. Donna was a nice kid. She was just caught in the middle, flat. 